How you doing, everybody? How are you, people over there on the other side of that thing? How are you? I'm good. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Wolf Den Podcast, where we talk about a Nintendo device that we don't know actually exists. That's a good summary, Will, of everything that's happening today. Uh, yep. Thank you, Rob and Battles, for the three-month subscription. I appreciate you. So, guess what? There's a new... Uh, there's a, no, more rumors of the exact same thing. I don't know why this, like, hit all of the major websites. We literally talked about this last week with the almost the same information. There's just, I guess, new... There, there's more... There's a, there's a bit more specific details and a price. Uh, yes. I don't like. Again, like it's it's just a rumor, and it's like I could have thrown a dart at a dartboard and then hit this. Yeah. You know, like it's it's this really isn't anything we should be going nuts about. Listen, uh, full disclosure, everybody. Before we started this podcast, we were like. I don't want to make the main topic Evo because yeah. Sony bought Evo because I would love to, I, we are going to talk about that, but, uh, I got some, I got some questions about that and some, uh, hot takes that probably are going to be a little ignorant. So, so I didn't want to make that the main topic, but this, I think we know a little a thing or two about will, I think we can call ourselves industry analysts because we said all of this last week. I think we've reached the point where we've seen enough of the rumors to know uh, what's plausible and what's not. And a, a, this honestly just looks like exactly the same thing, just with a, a little bit more detail. A and somebody threw a price out that sounds realistic, but also... I have some questions about the validity of that price. <laughs> I literally think that somebody just farted out that price. Okay, so yeah. he here's the, right. th here's the thing. It's Bloomberg again. They seem to be breaking this every time. I feel like they they see the numbers that are on their website when they talk, when they put Switch yeah. Pro in the title or 4K Switch, and they decide, you know what? Let's save a bit of information for next week because we need some views next week. And, and not only that, but they do it so often that they've, they've been doing a lot of video game articles like yeah. within the very recent past. And they do so much that both Bob and I have hit our free article limit. <laughs> and now we have to subscribe to Bloomberg to read the full article. So I think Jason Schreier works for them now, right? Formerly of he Kotaku. Does, but I yes, think that's um, why they're getting all this stuff. That's, that's probably why. Although, um, this article is not written by Jason Schreier. I was able to see that before the the paywall came up. So, so yeah, you click on it. If you Google the article, it'll come up first thing on Google. But uh, you click on it and you get you get this. It literally yeah. just says subscribe or 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 too bad you can't you can't read it. Subscribe or f you. That's why. So our good buddies at Nintendo Life just basically stole the article. <laughs> yeah. Everywhere else is reporting from Bloomberg's reporting, so. Yeah. Um, so here we are. Uh, Nintendo Life says the new 4K Switch model could launch for $400. $399 suggests... Analysts suggest. Uh, I want to... Uh, <laughs> that means nothing. <laughs> Just because an analyst said it could be $399, that means nothing yeah that is not news that's a dude taking a guess i'm mad that we're talking about this <laughs> <laughs> reports discussing the rumored nintendo switch pro a more powerful switch revision that's thought to be on the way this year are really starting to intensify with the latest from Bloomberg diving even deeper into the potential system's specs and release information. In a new report published this morning, Bloomberg says that Nintendo will adopt an upgraded NVIDIA chip and better graphics for the newer model, reconfirming its belief that the console will support NVIDIA's DLSS rendering technology to offer upscaled 4K visuals and is, quote, likely to include a 7-inch Samsung OLED uh, screen. Pause. All the other articles that I saw on this said that 
they're going to put in a chip that specifically handles DLSS rendering. Right. And that is something that we talked about last week. We said yeah. they might do something like that. Right. Um, and literally, this is just a guy saying they're probably going to do something like this. And then all of a sudden, there's news everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I'm jealous. Interestingly, <laughs> though, the site also reports that analysts are expecting the new Switch model to retail for, quote, as much as $100 over the $299 asking price of the current model. Bloomberg Intelligence's Matthew Canterman says three forty nine ninety nine will increase the value proposition of the device. But I still think Nintendo can drive strong demand even at three ninety nine. dollars uh, Of course, such a console is still yet to be announced by Nintendo, but should the company release a new and updated Switch boasting 4K visuals and, a more, pow- and more power, would you be willing to hand over $400? What price point do you think would be better? Um, I don't think this article said it, but uh, this is a bad article. <laughs> they they were they were other articles are talking about how it's going to come out later this year or i think bloomberg mm-hmm. straight up said it's going to come out later this year um i don't know if i buy that 399 price point me neither uh i feel like it could be possible that call it the switch pro for simplicity's sake they launch it at 299 and then lower the price of the other switches by like a hundred dollars or fifty dollars yeah like fifty dollars so so yeah because when the three when the new 3ds launched that launched for like uh what the original 3ds launched at and they lowered the price of the original 3ds i think that's the problem with this is that we are viewing this as a new nintendo switch situation Right or 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 you know some like a well, new 3ds we, situation. We've always said that this would be something like, yeah, a new Nintendo 3ds or like a a, a Nintendo Switch uh, X or whatever. Just like you know the PS4 Pro to the PlayStation 4. It's it's the same system but like with a modest spec increase. Yeah, other people are seeing it as uh the switch 2 either the switch 2 or an xbox one x or a playstation 4 pro they're seeing something well, that, like that's what we're seeing it as kind of there's a different well again I, I think it's more likely to be a ps4 pro or a one x situation than it is to be a ps5 or series x situation uh, i agree i i I think it's more likely to be that, but I think it's going to be even less of an upgrade than a PlayStation 4 Pro. I think at most you're going to get this DLSS chip that upscales things to 4K, but it's not true 4K. Mm -hmm. Whereas a PlayStation 4 Pro was capable of real 4K, but you still didn't really see much real 4K. Yeah. Um, So I think we're getting somewhere between like the new 3DS and a PlayStation 4 Pro type situation. That's what I think we're going to be getting. I think all these people are getting people's hopes up saying that we're getting like a brand new Nintendo Switch. Yeah. With all of these crazy specs. Because again, Nintendo will put a lot. They're going off of the hardware that's rumored to be in this thing. And Mm -hmm. they're going to underpower that hardware. They're not going to be utilizing the hardware to its full potential. So it's it, you're getting people's hopes up for no reason. Um, anyway, I found a different article. This is from Polygon. Um, this says the new Switch model to use upgraded NVIDIA chip with DLSS. Uh, this was also uh, today. Yeah, today. Uh, I don't want to read the whole thing. The next iteration of the Nintendo Switch hardware will include will included in upgraded NVIDIA chip and support the chipmaker's deep learning, super sampling DLSS technology. I lost Will for a second. Uh, Bloomberg reported Tuesday. Uh, that feature will allow the upgraded- I'm back. Yay, that feature will allow the upgraded- I was like tennis... screaming for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Bob, Bob, I'm dead, Bob. <laughs> 
That feature will allow the upgraded test switch to output 4K visuals when docked and plugged into a TV, the report says. So I guess that chip just won't work when it's not plugged in. I mean, that makes sense. You keep the power consumption low when it's in handheld mode. The new switch which has not been officially announced will reportedly include the seven inch LED, which is talked about already 720 resolution and could also uh, upwards of $400 analysts told Bloomberg, uh, blah, 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 blah. The addition of the DLSS would be a boon for new gamers and developers. NVIDIA's technology uses AI to accelerate graphics rendering through image reconstruction, maintaining high image quality while delivering improved frame rates. Put simply, it allows a video card to render a game at a lower internal resolution, reducing the load on the GPU as it uses NVIDIA's AI algorithm to generate a, reconstruct a reconstructed image that looks as good as, or in some cases better than, the game rendered at native resolution. Previously, developers had to work directly with NVIDIA to support DLSS in their games, leading to limited support of the feature. But a recent change to Epic Games' widely used Unreal Engine added support for the technology as a plug-in for the game development toolkit. Uh, reportedly to be released later this year in time for the holidays. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, again, I, I, I think we're going to get some... Yeah, it it, see, it seems like we're getting AI upscaling at, at, at most. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it, Which would be it, good. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I don't... Some people see this as we're going to get, you know, uh, better graphics in, in like, a new generation. Yeah, they, they think, think this is going to be, like, again, the Switch 2 or... You know the ps5 equivalent or whatnot yeah we need to we, we need to draw the line there i don't i i think that it i think chance i think it'd be weird <laughs> is luke real says switch semi-pro <laughs> <laughs> yes i i think i i think everybody's got to lower their expectations for a brand new uh switch uh yeah. generation i think we're going to be getting the same games that could run across both consoles yeah nintendo always has like a like a mid-generation iteration that's just like a slight change just just to fix all the little problems they used to have yeah i don't think the light was that at all i think the light was a completely separate thing no the light was specifically for people who because they saw the data of uh, people who play in portable mode and they want to cater specifically to that market however um i think nintendo absolutely could sell a switch for four hundred dollars I don't. I think it'd be weird to sell a brand new one for that much because they have the old one. Why wouldn't anybody just buy the old one? I think if they were to sell a Switch Pro for four hundred dollars, then they would need to, you know, really emphasize that this is, you know, the Pro model of the Switch and what that extra hundred dollars is going towards. Yeah, and and Nintendo's. Uh, Nintendo's uh, target audience is not the pro market. I think right. pro doesn't fit in Nintendo's <laughs> like you know repertoire, except for the pro yeah. controller. But like, yeah, oh yeah, that's not very pro, is it? <laughs> well, it, I mean, they did market it, you know, as an esports thing, you know, when it launched. Yeah, and then they quickly with, just with, scrapped that whole idea. Yeah, and then they, you know, they're like, you know what? Nah. <laughs> No, we don't care about esports, which we'll get into yeah. in, a, in a minute. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but I, I think Nintendo could... Nintendo is selling a, a butt ton of Switches, and I think that They're they selling, could still... Yeah. They could still sell a butt ton at $400. They haven't lowered the price ever of the Switch. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I think they could absolutely sell it for more. But I don't think... I think it'd be weird to... I don't think... They're going to sell a new one at more money. That that seems weird to me. I I think this is a this is one that is going to replace the old one. That's what I think because that's what Nintendo's always done in the past. It would be weird for them to do something different now. Even though the market's different now, the, yeah, the market now the we ha we have iter iterative versions. Yeah. yeah, which is which is why I don't think it's outside the realm of possibility that if this is just like you know the Switch Pro a bumped up Switch it 
I could conceivably go for a hundred dollars more. Uh, fifty dollars. Well, no, because the Switch Lite is a hundred dollars less, so they might keep that hundred dollar price difference between all the models. I think I think it makes sense. It's just the problem is if it's if it is truly like the Switch Two, if it is truly the next gen version of the Switch, then the previous models have to go down in price. Because I don't I mean, think Nintendo has ever sold a system at launch for more than three hundred. I mean, you do have Xbox over here having an underpowered version of the current generation console and a more powerful right. version, forcing right. developers to make do with both of those. Uh, but mm -hmm. I think Nintendo's already had a problem with getting developers on board with their severely underpowered console. Mm -hmm. So having them now forced to develop for two different consoles or make sure that it runs good on two different consoles... I mean, I mm -hmm. guess they could just make it work on the base switch and then hope DLSS upscaling does its job right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't. I. I I think, I I think, the answer is going to be much simpler. It's not going to be this complicated. I think there's just going to be an iterative version of the switch mm -hmm. that has minor differences, and the minor differences in this case being the OLED screen uh slightly more powerful maybe it'll actually be able to hold up 30 frames per second in breath of the wild this time um <laughs> uh stuff like that yeah. and 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 it might upscale to 4k using dlss mm -hmm. um announce when release when it, it, it all the rumors are saying later this year um if that's the case then around summer we'll probably hear uh we'll probably hear about it from nintendo yeah. officially um when did they do their announcement last summer i don't i don't remember it wasn't it wasn't the it wasn't e3 week uh it might have been around that time i remember they but all again, like freaking broke apart last year yeah i mean la last year it was hard to tell because like they didn't really do directs and stuff so AJ says Nintendo has its sights on Apple. They have spoken to their desire to make their console cycles like Apple, like iPad cycles. Apple uses the Pro branding. Wouldn't be shocked to see Nintendo follow suit. I just don't. I don't see Nintendo targeting that. I mean, I mean, they, a a Apple now the the MacBook Pros aren't very pro. It's like nothing right. pro about it. But they still have, like, you know, the iPhone. Do they call it the Pro? The iPhone 12 Pro? I think so. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. they just... The pro is doesn't necessarily mean, like, you know, professional video game player. Pro is really just a de designation that it's, like, a step up from uh, the previous generation. It doesn't well, necessarily mean hardcore. Well, that's what it's become. But that's not what pro means <laughs> pro means professional but it has become right. just a moniker for better right. but i think people will understand that if they if they call it the switch pro they'll understand that this is you know a bumped up version of the switch if they I, call, you know anything else could lead to confusion i see nintendo doing new nintendo switch which is a dumb name. New is dumb. Yes. Calling something yes. the new version of something is dumb. But that's just what Nintendo has done in the past. Yeah. Nintendo has done in the past. But uh, if they go with Pro, that would be them adopting current, you know, nomenclatures that I don't see Nintendo doing. I don't see Nintendo playing ball, really. <laughs> Nintendo well, does their I mean own thing. But they they do their own thing, and yet they've done they like they made a big deal of the fact that the Switch has a USB C port when they revealed it all those years ago. They've done they, they fuck all with that USB C port. <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> uh, baby doing steps. nothing. <laughs> baby steps here. They, they talked about you know at that reveal they said that it's got a USB C port. It's it's region free. Um, uses micro SD cards. Um, you know, slowly but surely, like there are adopting modern ideas and tech so it's not outside the realm of possibility that they would call it the switch pro 
I just feel like based on previous Nintendo consoles, the new Nintendo Switch or even the Super Switch is more likely than uh, the Switch Pro as a name. AJ says, that said, I think new or super is more like them. I don't think the name changes what this is. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I agree. I just, when people hear Switch Pro, they think of a completely different thing than when you say new Switch, because you look at the past new stuff that Nintendo did, and it's very small changes and like a, like a cool yeah. new design and stuff. But when you hear Switch Pro, you think 4K, this thing's going to have the four fans in it. It's going to play Apex at a, a steady frame rate, and it's not going to look like mush. But that's not the case. It's going to be, you know, slightly more stable. And like, that's it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I think I th it's very exciting. It's very exciting to hear about new hardware. It's very exciting to talk about these rumors and whatnot, but everybody's got to reel it in a little bit. <laughs> you could buy a switch now if you want a switch. It's totally fine. Yeah. This new one's going to probably look really cool, but it, it's not going to make your life it's not going to make your life miraculously better all of a sudden. Um, that being said, remember when the, when they talked about how great it is that the switch has a USB-C port, all the rumors said that the, the dock was going to have some sort of, uh, functionality in it. Like it was going to have a graphics rendering inside of it. It was going to yeah. make everything great when you plugged it into the dock. And that was and not did. true. Yeah. And everyone was like, Nintendo will eventually make a dock that renders graphics better. And that never happened. It's been four years. Yeah. Um make it Thunderbolt. <laughs> Are we going backwards now? <laughs> um Well listen, Thunderbolt Don't the new MacBooks Though those USB C ports are technically Thunderbolt ports, because Thunderbolt is just like a speed. It's not the yes. shape of the port. Yeah. Correct. Well, it's a protocol. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But but I it's not the shape of the port, but I think the wiring it matters. Right. Uh because you can have a Thunderbolt port that is not USB-C. Yes. But I think all USB-C is Thunderbolt. Yes. Also important to note, new is a relatively new brand for them. Nintendo doesn't really have a pattern that's set in stone that way. New isn't that new when you talk about games. They've been saying new for games for a while. For hardware, I think it's just 3DS, right? Well... Yeah, well, game. The only games that are new is New Super Mario Brothers, and New Pokemon Snap. Right. Okay. <laughs> There's more than just Mario but Brothers. Is there? Because that's that's like a whole series. I don't, I don't even know how to how to Google that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Nintendo oh. new phrasing. <laughs> yeah, Nintendo games with new in the title. Oh, Metacritic. Oh, that's Nintendo Switch. No, we can't do that. Uh, if Nintendo Switch games from A to Z. List of Nintendo games. Oh, here we go. Just go to just go to new. Yeah. They should use Super more. They don't use Super enough. I feel like they only use Super. You know, during the Super Nintendo. They used it a little bit before the Super Nintendo. Super Mario Brothers. Yes. That was really it. <laughs> no, I think there's another. Here we go. Now we're now we're gonna be now I'm just spatting bullshit that we need to Google. Alright. Oh, oh, here's one. Uh during the the Wii era, when they ported some GameCube games over, they were labeled new play control. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Uh, Animal Crossing, New Leaf, Yoshi's New Island. There was 
for NES, there was Super Car, Super Dodgeball, Super Glove Ball, Super Jeopardy. Uh, Super Pitfall, Super Spike V-Ball. So, yeah, Super was a... Super Turrican. Super was like a but thing. Those, yeah. But those weren't Nintendo games. A lot of those were third parties. They were trying to jump on Super Mario yeah. Brothers. Yeah. Okay, I don't think... so. There's not enough games labeled new that I would consider that a popular Nintendo trend. Yes. Uh, yeah, I'll I'll, I'll I'll take that one. Uh, I just think you got to look at it more like it's going to be an iterative upgrade. Not so much yeah. a brand new generation, or even uh, uh, a mid-cycle powerhouse. You know, it's just going to be like what they always do. It's going to be a slight bump. Nothing crazy. Yeah. All right, so I got to stop saying new Nintendo Switch. I got to start saying Super Nintendo Switch. <laughs> the Super Switch. Um, that would be a terrible name too. I don't like that either. Well, I mean, what else are they gonna call it? It's gonna no matter what they call it, it's gonna be a bad name. Let's just get that out of the way. It's gonna be bad. Every every console name lately has been terrible. The Switch Heavy to <laughs> differentiate it from the Switch Lite. That would be the worst name they could they could. That do. would be the worst name. And it's just a brick that doesn't <laughs> that isn't portable at all. Yeah. What about the DLSS dock? That seems to be too good to be real. It's not going to be in the dock, is the thing. It's going to be in the switch, but it only yeah. works when it's docked. It could be in the dock. That yeah, they have the technology, but I don't think they're going to do that. I think they're going to have it in the switch itself. Worse than the Wii U? You can't get much worse than the Wii U. Yeah. Um, new Nintendo brick. <laughs> All right, I'm I'm so sick of talking about 4K right. Switch Pro rumors. All right, we'll put it off until the new rumors next week. In the meantime, uh, I Sony. Want, I want I want to thank the the subscribers. Oh, okay, fine. I'll do that. <laughs> uh smashly thank you for the prime uh encrypted squid thank you for the bit uh travel steinberg thank you for the 12 months wow a whole year and still no feet pics well well i think i speak wow. for everyone when, here when i say butts 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 don't forget to use your prime sub on these wolf boys thanks man um i'm playing farming simulator on the switch while i'm watching this how is that good <laughs> oh farming simulator i'm thinking of a different game vince thank you for the prime subscription all right will sony so did sony something bought evo. sony wow bought evo. <laughs> crazy sony interactive entertainment and the new esports adventure rts have jointly acquired evolution championship the evolution championship series uh this is a press release from sony in 1996, a fledgling fighting game tournament sparked a cultural phenomenon that drew an international following through its inspiring exhibition of skill and fun. In the decades since, countless legendary battles in that storied tournament, now known as the Evolution Championship Series, or EVO, have been waged in the virtual arenas of timeless games, many on PlayStation consoles. Today... We are thrilled to announce the next chapter in the story of PlayStation and Evo, the world's largest and longest running fighting game tournament. Sony Interactive Entertainment has teamed up with RTS to acquire Evo through a joint venture partnership. With expertise spanning esports event management, brand and developer uh, consulting, and game talent management, RTS is a new venture led by CEO Stuart Saw and backed by investors including global entertainment, sports, and content company Endeavor. Evo co-founders Tom and Tony Cannon will remain closely involved in an advisory role to ensure Evo continues to serve the fighting game community and support its vibrant growth. This partnership marks a new collaboration 
bringing together the resources and expertise that will allow us to elevate the global the global reach, scale, and engagement surrounding this iconic gaming tournament. Uh, with support of world-class publishers, Evo is returning this year as Evo Online, a fully online co competition taking place August 6th to the 8th and August 13th to the 15th. Entry will be free and players in North America, Europe, Asia, and Latin America will be able to compete in Bandai Namco's Entertainment's Tekken 7, Capcom Street Fighter V Championship Edition, Warner Brothers Mortal Kombat 11 Ultimate, and Arc Systems Works Guilty Gear Strive in an open format. The online qualifiers will be live streamed for fans and more details will be shared in the coming weeks on evo.gg. Our collective team is laser focused on one mission, preserving the authenticity of Evo for fighting game community and finding creative ways alongside our fans to grow the tournament and make event and make its events and broadcasting more fun, engaging and accessible than ever. At its core, Evo will remain Evo will remain what it has always been, an open format competition that gives fighting game fans from different countries a chance to connect, test their skills, and forge new friendships. Okay, I'm good. <laughs> um, I'm over here trying to see. I'm pretty sure they've been playing Street Fighter and I think Tekken on PlayStation consoles at Evo. Well, Street Fighter V is a PlayStation exclusive. Oh, What's it? it's, not, so, it's not on PC? It's on PC. Oh, console exclusive. But console exclusive. So they might have they might run it on console be just so it's like even across the board. Right. You know? Yeah, because there's always variants in PCs. Tekken um, is PC, says Sardi. Uh, at Evo? Yeah. That sucks that, that these tournaments yeah. have to set up all these PCs. <laughs> <laughs> be much easier to just have playstations uh i wonder if that's i wonder if that's a thing that tech and people don't like i wonder if i wonder if they're mad that they gotta go to playstation now well i mean i feel like no matter what you know if it's if it's a multi-platform fighting game they're gonna they're gonna use the sony version we might not see Killer Instinct at Evo ever again. We might not see Super Smash Brothers at Evo ever so again. So that's what I'm getting at here. There was a yeah. tweet. Whoa, that looked like a penis. <laughs> oh my god, that's a foot. About to get taken down here. Oh boy. Um there was there was a response from Nintendo. Oh. Um Nintendo spokesperson provided a statement to IGN mentioning how the company would continue to assess Evo as it plans for future Super Smash Bros. tournament activity. Quote, Nintendo mm -hmm. has enjoyed engaging with fans at past Evo tournaments and wish the show organizers the best with their new venture. We will continue to assess Evo and other opportunities as we plan for future online and offline Super Smash Bros. tournament activity. So, uh nintendo obviously notoriously useless in in esports <laughs> uh they, mm -hmm. they have they they never uh they do some things like behind the scenes to like kind of like shadow support these things yeah. but but they really don't do as much as they could or should to 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 help foster like a good esports community especially something like smash brothers smash brothers could be the biggest esports game in the freaking world yeah probably next to league of legends just because it's so accessible and easy for people to understand um or i guess the barrier to entry is so low um but nintendo just they don't care uh they they they, they want people to play the game how they want them to play it um and also, I wouldn't be surprised if they're purposely distancing themselves from the current Smash Brothers community, like competitive mm. community, because there's all these like controversies and stuff that have been plaguing that community. Um, so after this statement from 
Evo and PlayStation, uh, they talked about a bunch of games and Smash Brothers was missing from the conversation. And mm -hmm. that's why Nintendo made this statement saying they're going to continue to assess Evo. So it, it kind of seems like Smash Brothers is not a priority to Evo. Yeah. And N it, Evo is not a priority to Nintendo. Uh, which is really unfortunate because that's yeah. really the only reason I cared about Evo was I wanted to see the Smash Brothers and I wanted to go last year and then that you know everything everything sucks. Um, and I'm pretty sure Smash Brothers was uh, it was one of the biggest games that they had for sure. Yeah. Um. And the online aspect of Smash Brothers isn't great. So I could also see why Nintendo doesn't really care because they don't want people to see how terrible the online is. <laughs> and Evo, something happened last year. Oh, you know what? I think they I think they had to get rid of uh, um, there was a controversy. Melee. They used to always do Melee and Ultimate, and I think last year they had to stop doing uh, yeah. Melee because they would have had to use, you know, emulators to do it yeah yeah um, that was a different tournament that wasn't evo um it was a different tournament but i think that that was specifically slippy which was the new sort of online situation yeah um but i think back in evo well let's say evo 2020 games well evo 2020 was canceled they didn't do online no it was canceled uh what was it Due to the coronavirus pandemic, the organization canceled the physical event and instead planned a series of online events, but but those were canceled due to sexual misconduct allegations against organizer and co-founder uh, Joey Cellular. I forgot about that. Yeah. But when okay, so in May of last year, when they announced that it's going online, they dropped Ultimate. They dropped Smash Brothers Ultimate. They said, we're going online. We're not doing Smash Brothers because their online sucks. That was the controversy um, that I was thinking about. And then they can Are you sure that was for Evo? Yeah, I'm looking at the article right now. But then they canceled the whole event because the guy who ran Evo is a piece of shit. Right. And that's probably, honestly, why it got sold to PlayStation. Because uh, yeah. it, need it needed new people running it. Um... Yeah, I'm getting my uh I'm getting my I'm getting all my controversies mixed up. But uh the, Evo, was already not had, at, Evo already had Melee wasn't with, at the twenty nineteen one either. Okay. I'm I'm mixing all the controversies together in a big controversy yeah. stew. Twenty nineteen, the big deal was Melee wasn't there. Twenty twenty, they got rid of Smash Brothers because they didn't want to play it online, and then they got rid of the whole event entirely because the dude uh, is a piece of shit. Um, and now twenty twenty one, no talks about Smash Brothers, new ownership being PlayStation. Um, mm -hmm. Now, I posted this on Twitter and I said, "What are the what are the positives of Sony owning?" evo and most of the answers are more funding and uh and you know i don't know better organization but mm -hmm. why does big company buying thing automatically equal more funding i don't well, think because, it does well why would it because sony is a billion dollar corporation evo was was nowhere close to that but who says sony that is who says that Sony's going to put more money into it? Well, why wouldn't they? Why would they just buy a video game tournament and just, you know, have it be what it's always been? Obviously, they want to, you know, use it and promote it. This will be a great way to help promote Sony games. So, obviously, they're going to put more money into it than Evo would have ever put into it itself. So... Sometimes maybe it's not, maybe it's so, not like actual more funding, but it's the possibility for more funding. Right. So, yeah. Sometimes a company will buy another company to just feed off of it, <laughs> or to have some yeah. sort of control of it for their advertising and whatnot. Like it is a good opportunity for them to 
you know, advertise their consoles and their games on a big yeah. scale. But who's to say they're going to like, you know, make it organized better or who's to say they're going to make it a bigger production value? It, they could just let it run the same as it always had, but just provide PlayStation consoles and some other weird backend stuff that's like administrative, you know? It doesn't yeah. necessarily mean they're going to... The million dollar company buys thing, here's a shit ton of money. Like, they already bought it. <laughs> they already spent the shit ton of money. That's why I'm saying, like, I don't necessarily think that this means... uh better evo i think that this just means no smash brothers <laughs> which is uh I think, I think it would be foolish of sony though to not spend some extra money and resources and like make evo all that it can be you know because mm -hmm. it, it can't like they can like make it you know an even bigger event than it already is and you know like you said it could be a great marketing tool for sony itself and i'm sure they would they wouldn't mind throwing some money behind you know a big marketing push but there's plenty of you know there's plenty of big companies that bought smaller companies and ran them into the ground you know like that's, right th that could absolutely happen here they could no, buy they could have bought evo tried to do what they want to do out of it it doesn't work out and they go well forget it and then the whole thing closes down like that's totally a possibility well if well, also, too, like, Sony is not the sole owner of Evo. Their RTS Ventures is also part owner. Mm -hmm. So they also have a say in what's going on. They also uh, can throw funding behind uh, Evo if they want to. They can also, you know, buy out Sony share and take Evo in their direction. Encrypted Squids is Skype, which is a good example. <laughs> <laughs> and we will talk about that later. Um, yes. And AJ says it'll be a bigger Evo that'll be a giant PlayStation commercial. Uh, on Netflix, there's a documentary uh, about the last blockbuster in End Oregon. Mm -hmm. It's called The Last Blockbuster. And they actually go into why Blockbuster uh, ultimately failed. And it wasn't because of Netflix specifically. Part of the problem was because when they were bought by Viacom in the 90s, Viacom took all of their profits in order to fund the purchase of Paramount Pictures. And from that, they left Blockbuster specifically with a lot of debt that they had a really hard time trying to pay Wait, off. wait, Viacom tried to buy Paramount? Yes. And they also owned Blockbuster? They owned Blockbuster, but Blockbuster mm. was profitable enough that Viacom basically siphon the profits from blockbuster towards their paramount pictures fund oh and they and they were Leaving. like don't worry it'll keep making money exactly mm -hmm. so and the second it didn't uh I, yeah they sold it to dish network <laughs> <laughs> that's another problem with big company buying smaller companies is that they think like uh they look at the numbers and they say okay this is going to make x amount of money next year so we're going to use that money for this and then yeah. The next year happens, Netflix becomes a thing, and then all of a sudden that <laughs> company stops making money. Yeah. Um So yeah, I don't I don't ness I'm I'm I don't think this is like a terrible thing for Evo. I think this is potentially a good thing and potentially uh, a, 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 an icky thing. <laughs> right. So I think we have to wait and see what Evo is going to be like this year and then next year, because hopefully next year it will be open. So, um, I don't know. This is, t this is potentially really bad for the Smash Brothers community because this was the, you know, uh, this is the fighting games tournament. Yeah. So, uh, and this was the, the big showcase of, um, the Smash Brothers community. That is not a Nintendo invitational. The actual yeah. no items tournament. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what. And, and and the Smash Bros community is in complete shambles right now because yeah. half of the people in it are are uh, you know off the grid because they're all pieces of shit. Um, so uh, there's a lot of question marks. What's going to happen next year when things start to open up and we start to see uh, 
more from Smash Brothers and 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 other tournaments like this. Mm-hmm. Also, next year, what will it be? Friggin' like four years since uh, since Smash Brothers came out. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be an old game by then. But then the Switch Pro will well, be a I thing, mean, and then no more people will have Switches. They do play. They do play old games. Like last year, they would have played uh, Marvel vs. Capcom two. Uh, I'm trying to look at they played Melee games. forever. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, I, I know that they play old games. I, I'm just saying, yeah. like, like you know, uh, there was a lot of opportunity when Smash Brothers was like the hot ticket item. You know. Yeah. And right now, the community is really not there so um mm-hmm. uh and plus the inter- the the online for smash brothers is terrible so the fact that there's no in person tournaments really isn't helping anything i mean i'm yeah. sure smash brothers is still selling a lot i'm not saying this is bad for nintendo or anything i'm sure nintendo's doing just, doing just fine i'm just yeah. saying i just wish smash brothers competitive smash brothers was a bigger deal than it is is all i'm saying yeah a lot of Smash players hated Evo. To be fair, they treated Smash like a like a sideshow, even when it was the literal main event. Yeah, that I, that's because I I don't blame Evo for that. Like, yeah, it was the one. It was the one thing that most the most people were watching on Evo. But yeah. Nintendo didn't give a shit, and like, yeah, that's the problem. Imagine like, you know, Capcom and PlayStation is like, yo, Evo, you guys are great. Keep shilling our games. We love you. I would treat that like the main event. <laughs> yeah. So I don't really blame Evo for 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 that. And plus the prize pools probably weren't that big for Smash Brothers. Yeah. Freaking Brawlhalla had a million dollar prize pool for some tournament. One million dollars. There you go. And I think that's a free to play game. Yes. <laughs> um All right. Uh that's it for Evo. Uh where do we leave off? Vince, thank you for the prime subscription. Colton Duckworth, thank you for the prime. Picky Gamer, thank you for the seven months. Thanks for the great content, guys. Question if Nintendo released a Breath of the Wild 2 alongside Switch Pro, do you think they will up Breath of the Wild 1 to support 4K as well. I don't think the game will natively support 4K. I think the DLSS will force it to 4K, but I don't think it's going to be the right. 4K that you really want it to be. Yeah, uh, I don't think Nintendo is going to like do a like a Switch Pro patch or whatever for like previous games. I think it's possible they could patch Breath of the first Breath of the Wild to uh, support a steadier 1080-30. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Breath of the Wild 2 might be cleaner in that regard. Uh, like, it'll be a na- native 1080-30, maybe. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't, see a, I don't see 4K being a native thing. Triton, that one guy, thank you for 10 bits. Uh, hey, Will slash Bob, how do you feel about Black Widow coming out on a Disney Plus premiere access, but it's now releasing July 9th? When do you think Shang-Chi will be pushed back to now? Uh, yeah, this is just, they just announced this. Black Widow is going to be coming out on Disney Plus 9th, but it's going to be one of those premiere deals where you have to pay thirty dollars to watch it in addition to uh, the seven or eight dollars a month that you get for that you pay already for disney plus um all that means is that i'm gonna wait another few months until it is free to watch on disney plus with the price of my subscription that's what i'm doing with raya and the last dragon that's what i'm that's what i did with mulan um aside from that though i think it's great i think they finally realized that theaters are not opening anytime soon or if they are people are not going so put it on your streaming service i know people will pay the 30 dollars to watch <laughs> it because at least here in new york that's the price of two movie tickets that's so, a good point yeah yeah but what if i want to watch it alone that sucks i know <laughs> that's annoying but uh yeah i don't think it's gonna be that good i think this is gonna be the first Fuck, marvel movie where i'm like that wasn't that good <laughs> I don't know. It, it's it's it is weird. It's 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 a very weird time for movies. 
I've every Marvel movie I've seen, I've walked out of it and said that at the very minimum, that was pretty good. Yes. I I feel like this one I'm I might not feel like that. Uh, I, I don't know. I feel like it might be like because we've waited so long for it. We've waited the a long time. Like... There haven't been any Marvel movies since, except for the shows that I haven't seen any of. Yeah. Um. So I don't know. Now nah, that title goes to Captain Marvel. I liked Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel was fine. Captain Marvel was good. Yeah, well, that's that's the one that I came out and said that was pretty good. <laughs> that was it. That yeah. was the bare well, minimum. Also, Ant Man, and the reason why Ant Man is Ant Man is great. <laughs> the reason why the first Ant Man I came out of it and was like that was good was because it is the exact plot of Tower Heist with Ben Stiller and the guy Michael P- Pena or whatever his name is yeah. plays the exact same character in both of those movies. Well, I've never seen Tower High, so Ant-Man is fantastic. I've seen that movie twice. How did on, you see that movie twice? On TV when I was homesick. It was on twice, two <laughs> times when I was homesick for some reason. Oh, man. And it's a it's an okay movie. Ant-Man, Ant-Man is great. Ant-Man is the most underrated of the Marvel films. Ant-Man, by that. a character, awesome. Love him and everything. Yeah. Uh, next news. Pikmin. I love. You know how much I love Pikmin. It's my favorite uh, game. Your Pikmin. Favorite. Yeah. Love me some Pikmin. I can't get enough Pikmin. <laughs> it's the it's the <laughs> next next Pokemon Niantic. It's the next Nintendo Niantic mobile game. Niantic, Yay. developer of Smash Hit Pokemon Go, has announced a new partnership with Nintendo. The first new game from the collaboration will be a mobile augmented reality game based on Nintendo's popular Pikmin franchise and will launch later this year. Details Ooh, are thin right now, but Niantic says that the app will include gameplay activities to encourage walking and make walking more delightful. Uh, if you want to receive more information about the new game as it's available, you can sign up here to get updates. Uh, the new Pikmin AR game will be the first developed by Niantic's Tokyo Studio. Oh, interesting. There you go. So, so they need to release this in the summer or else forget it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're over. This is a tweet from Niantic. We're overjoyed to make new memories with our partners at Nintendo and you. Uh, imagine exploring the world through the wonder of AR and alongside all of your pals, including your new Pikmin friends. Learn more about our partnership here. And then you can click uh, on a little blog post. Yes. That doesn't look like it has that much information. Uh, Niantic's AR technology has made it possible for us to experience the world as if Pikmin are secretly living all around us, Nintendo's Shigeru Miyamoto said in a statement. Based on the theme of of making walking fun, our mission is to provide people with new experiences that's different from traditional games. We hope that the Pikmin and this app will become a partner in your life. The Pikmin Ooh. franchise is all about exploring a very Earth-like planet uh, with packs of adorable Pikmin creatures. So a Niantic-made Pikmin game about walking and exploring the world around you makes a lot of sense. The latest game in the Pikmin series is the Nintendo Switch's Pikmin 3 Deluxe, an upgraded version of the 2013 game first released on the Wii U. Niantic didn't say what other games it would be making with Nintendo, but it sounds like the two companies have secured some kind of long-term partnership. We're honored that Nintendo has chosen Niantic to be its publisher of real-world AR applications. Niantic said more details about uh, upcoming apps will be revealed in the coming months. So so it's not a surprise that Niantic is making more Nintendo stuff, because... Uh, yes. Uh... Pokemon Go was such a big hit. Although that was yeah. the Pokemon Company. Yes, but um, let's not forget the Pokemon Company and Nintendo have such a close relationship that Pokemon Company is probably like, hey, check out these guys. I remember Nintendo partnered with a lot of mobile companies like like DNA. Yeah, DNA. Uh, I don't remember what their relationship was like with Niantic or if we knew that they had a relationship with Niantic. Well, didn't Nintendo yeah. buy DNA? Like outright? Yes, 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 you're right. Yeah. I don't remember their specific relationship with Niantic. 
Um, I think I think it might just be through the Pokemon company. During the spin out, Nint Niantic announced that Google, Nintendo, and the Pokemon company would invest. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Google, Nintendo, and the Pokemon company gave Niantic funding. Uh, so there you go. That was all the way back in 2015. So if you don't know, Niantic is a, it. It came out from uh, the guy who made Google Earth. Yes, I think they. Niantic is best known for developing all back to reality game Ingress, Pokemon Go, and Harry Potter Wizards Unite. I forgot about that one. Yeah. Uh, the company was formed as Niantic Labs in 2010 as an internal startup within Google. The company became an independent ent entity in October 2015. It has offices in San Francisco, well, all over the place. Um, the company is formed by John Hank as was formed in 2010 by John Hank as Niantic Labs, an internal startup. Uh, Hank previously led uh, Google's Geo division, which included Google Earth, Maps, Local, Street View, SketchUp, and Panoramio. So that's why he made that. He did. He did. You know. Yeah. Google Earth type stuff, and then he made. He spun out and made the game Ingress, which I used to play, uh, which was basically yeah. Pokemon Go, but you're like a hacker. Uh, mm -hmm. But it was the exact same premise as Pokemon Go. You go to a location, you fight a gym, but in this case, it was a node that you hack. Um, it was pretty cool. And then they actually, for Pokemon Go, they took all of the nodes from Ingress. So yeah. that's why the world was populated so quickly with uh, with gyms and, and, and little landmarks because they took all those landmarks from Ingress. Um... So anyway, now we know that's why Nintendo has a has a has a little little uh toe in the in the water of Niantic. Yeah. Anyway, interesting that Pikmin's the one that they're going with. <laughs> well, Pikmin makes a lot of sense if you think about it. You know, cuz the game is Pikmin the game is all about like walking around this world and discovering these little Pikmin creatures and whatnot. So why not just Add that to the Pokemon Go formula. It makes more sense than like a lot of other Nintendo properties. I, I hope that there's a there's a new mechanic or like a reason why it's Pikmin. You know, like I hope that it's not the same thing as like let's just walk around and collect up these Pikmin. I hope that there's like a like a new purpose and it's not no, just I'm a copy sure, paste of Pokemon Go. I'm sure there'll be like Pikmin specific quests and stuff that you can do in it. Right. Uh, yeah, like you use the Pikmin in a different way. I hope it's not just like yeah. a copy paste of the battle system from Pokemon Go. Yeah. Um, I will play this. I'm not, you know, a huge Pikmin fan, <laughs> but I'll I'll give this a shot. I'd I'd like to play it. I like I like I loved Pokemon Go when it was a thing. Um, I don't yeah. think this will have the same appeal as Pokemon though. I think it'll be a big deal, but I don't think it's going to be like Pokemon big deal. In Japan, probably going to be a really big deal. Oh, in Japan, it'll be huge. And that's why it's being developed by Niantic's Tokyo Studio. Yes. Um, but I'd imagine this would be released sometime in the summer. Get people outside. Yeah. If not, then they miss the mark a little bit. Maybe September? Maybe? A fall situation? Yeah, it could be nice in the fall. Fall in Japan is a nice time to be outside. Summer in Japan is insanely hot. Yeah. So, maybe. I don't know. Look out for more Pikmin later this year. Uh, Next. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> more PlayStation news. I forgot yeah, about this. This is, this is like a big deal when it came out. Um, next gen VR on PS5. Meet the new controllers. Hey. I I I don't understand why VR needs to be so weird looking. <laughs> Do you really need all of that around your hands? Probably not. Like the Oculus has little circles. 
Yeah. And like, that's a lot less obtrusive, but still, I don't understand the purpose. It might be I so know, that like, I think it might be so the headset can see them. Cause, cause I when, I, what... when I touch the top, like where those circles are, yeah, it freaks it out. It doesn't know like where the things are. I forgot what the, um, the valve version of this is. That's also like, it's a circle around your hands and whatnot. Right. Um, uh, but yeah, I guess I guess that's that's the thing. Circular controllers. Uh, following the recent reveal of our next generation virtual reality system for PlayStation Five, uh, I'm excited to unveil more details about the new controller that will be a, play a critical role at, in providing gamers with the VR experience we've uh, we're working to deliver. Our new VR controller speaks to our mission of achieving a much deeper sense of precise and. Sh- of presence, sorry, and a stronger feeling of immersion in VR experiences. Uh, it will build upon the innovation we introduced with the DualSense wireless controller, which changed how games feel on PS5 by unlocking a new way to tap into the sense of touch. And now we're bringing that innovation to VR gaming design. The first thing you'll notice about our next gen VR controller is its unique design, which takes on an orb shape that allows you to hold the controller naturally <laughs> while playing with a high degree of freedom. There are no constraints with how you're moving your hands, providing uh, developers with the ability to create unique gameplay experiences. We're also designing new controllers with the great ergonomics in mind, uh, so it's well balanced and comfortable to hold in each of your hands. We applied learning. We applied learning from the testing users with a range of hand sizes as well as the decades of insight from controllers across all PlayStation platforms, the result is an iconic design that will change how VR games are played. Don't call something iconic if you're just debuting it. I, I think it's interesting you don't, that you, you you click on you the don't decide. if you click on the uh, the picture, it goes to Flickr. Really? Yeah, that's weird. Huh? Does Sony uh, own Flickr? Feature. I don't think so. Features. The new VR controller enables players to feel and interact with games in a much more uh, visceral way. There are several features, including key features from the DualSense controller, which match our vision for what the next generation VR games can be. Adapted triggers. Each VR controller, left and right, includes an adaptive trigger button that adds palpable tension when pressed, uh, similar to what's found in the DualSense controller. If you've played a PS5 game, You'll be familiar with the tension uh, in the L2 and R2 buttons when they when you press them, such as when you're drawing your bow to fire an arrow. When you take the, that kind of mechanic and apply it to VR, the experience is amplified to the next level. Haptic feedback. I'm not going to read the description for all of these. Haptic feedback, finger touch detection, tracking, action buttons, and analog sticks. Um, the left controller contains one analog stick, triangle button, and square button a grip button l1 a trigger button l2 and the create button the right controller contains one analog stick uh cross or x circle buttons uh r1 r2 and the options button the grip button can be used to pick up in-game objects as one example uh sony interactive product entertainment's product engineering and design teams have collaborated to build our new vr controller from the ground up with a total with the goal of making a leap for a huge leap from current gen VR gaming we're thrilled with the controller we've developed but what matters now is how game how game creators will take advantage of the features to design the next generation of VR experiences prototypes of our new VR controller will be in the hands of the development community soon and we can't wait to see what ideas they come up with and how the controller helps bring their imagination to life so flicker <laughs> was was uh bought by verizon okay. no no it was bought by yahoo which was then acquired by verizon mm-hmm. and then Flickr was sold to smug mug which well, is like okay. an image hosting site or something yeah. um so anyway uh i think this controller looks really cool and I and, and I think that the layout's really cool because it works well with Oculus. I'm sure it'll work well yeah. with this. And it says it's it's got if the haptic feedback is anything like the dual sense, uh, you know, 3D, yeah, 
whatever the rumble like the friggin' the yeah. cool rumble situation that it has if it has is anything like that that would be awesome and if it could do it around your whole hand that would be sick yeah the only problem i have is where the fuck am i gonna put this thing <laughs> where is it gonna you go while you're where you're storing it yeah where do i put it when i'm done play i'm done playing now where's it go you'll have to get um, you'll have to get like a stand or a dock or something. Yeah, now it's just in my life forever. Yeah. <laughs> I hate that. I already got the Oculus on like a nice, it, it's on a nice little stand, but it's still yeah. like out, you know? I don't need mm -hmm. another one. This is I even think, more I, obtrusive. The other thing is just yeah. on my windowsill. This needs like a whole glass case or something. Yeah. Uh, I think it's good that they're finally making new controllers because previously you had to use the, the PlayStation Move controller and for the PS4, and that was a generation old. That came yeah. out on the PS3. Yeah, and it um, used the light. It yeah. used the camera and light to track it. That was uh, yeah. probably not the best. So uh, this one looks to be much more in line with uh, current VR systems like... Uh, the Vive and Oculus um, finger touch detection. It says that the controller can detect your fingers without any pressing in the area where you place oh. your thumb, index, or middle fingers. This enables you to make more natural gestures, which I know a lot of like uh, the Valve Index has like a controller like that. So that's what makes Half Life Alex so immersive. That that probably um, requires the orb shape because because on yeah. the Oculus Quest Two, the one that I have. You have yeah. to you have to have your thumbs like resting on the buttons for it to for you to see like so when you have the controller up in your vision, uh, mm -hmm. you uh, like you see the controller and there's a little like man uh, mannequin of a hand, and if you have your yeah. if you have your finger resting on the button, your hand will be closed. But if you have it up, yeah. your ca the mannequin's fingers will be up. But there's no in between, right. you know, like this, it seems like there might be an in between. Yeah. And there is this weird disassociation that happens when you're in the headset for a long time playing a game like that. You start to feel this weird sort of like, okay, my hand's a mannequin hand now. It's really bizarre. And then when you take the headset yeah. off, you're, I, I was like going like this. I was like, whoa. <laughs> so, uh, this is this that would be sick if 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 it just if you can use all hand gestures and stuff that'd be cool yeah um seems expensive <laughs> oh yeah this is gonna be very expensive how much is a uh, dual sense on its own it's like 80 bucks yeah this will be well over 100 because i imagine you have to buy both of them do you know you can't get a gray Joy-Con for less than fucking $80 right now? I hate that. <laughs> right? Gray. Yeah, gray. For what? A singular? No, or... no, no. A pair, a pair. A pair. $80? Really? $80. Jeez. I don't know, man. Joy-Cons, it's weird because like you can't buy them individually anymore, really. And... You can. It's like just, they, they're just hard to find. Yeah, I don't know. And like the colors and the pricing is different between all. It's it's not fun. I don't, I wanted to get new Joy Cons, but it seems like a hassle. Uh, it's seventy dollars for a Dual Sense, by the way. Controller. Yeah. It's on sale so right I now for it. for set for sixty eight dollars. There you go. Uh, this is def There's no way this is going to be less than a hundred bucks. Uh, which sucks because the headset's probably going to be pretty damn expensive too. Oh, yeah. It'll give me a well, reason the, to play my PlayStation. The headset for the PS4 PSVR was like 300 bucks, wasn't it? Yeah, and 400 for the whole shebang if you wanted the yeah. camera and the... With the camera the, and the... Yeah. And the move controllers. We got the $300 one because uh, I had, had the, the camera, camera already and I didn't really want to play move games. Yeah. Um. All right. So I mean, we still don't know what the freaking headset looks like, but I guess soon we will find out. Mm -hmm. Just like with the PlayStation Five, we learned about the controller before we learned about the rest of it. I 
I got an email where the subject is accessories game, all lowercase. <laughs> Those are the best. We got 50 bits from Rec Recruita Zero. Thank you very much. Here is the next news. We have no more Ninji speedruns. They're ending. Oh, I've talked about this briefly. Uh, Nintendo confirms that Ninji speedrun number 20, which is next month's Ninji speedrun, will be the final competition held, likely being the last new content for Super Mario Maker 2. Uh, Ninji speedruns. Important information. This is from the Ninji speedruns Twitter. I don't know if it's official. It's not. Not affiliated with Nintendo. I didn't know this was a Twitter account, or else I would have followed this and and uh, and put uh, notifications on because I never know when there's a new Ninji speedrun. I need people to tweet at me to tell me. Yeah. Um, oh, this is all in Japanese. I can't read this yet. <laughs> <laughs> um. So anyway, Ninji speedruns Twitter account tweeted. Important information on Ninja, Ninji 20 just dropped. Ninji 20 will indeed be the final Ninji, and it will last two weeks. It starts on uh, August. Uh, bleh, bleh. It starts on April 13th at 10 p.m. Eastern, and ends on April 27th. And then there's a source, and it's the Japanese uh, uh, Nintendo website. Mm-hmm. Uh. Oh, so this was, yeah, when they announced the last Ninji speedrun, they said that this would be the last one. Okay. Also, long... also to note, yeah. a picture of Bowser was attached to the post by Nintendo, almost certainly foreshadowing Ninji 20. I, I'd assume there's going to be a big boss fight. The next delivery is scheduled for April 14th, Wednesday, the 20th course, which is the final round, has plenty of volume. The event period will also be extended to two weeks. Please in please join us. Delivery date is subject to change without notice. How long have they been doing the Ninji speed runs for? Because it feels like they haven't been doing them for that long. I think one year. Okay, then. It was in one of the updates. It wasn't it didn't launch with uh, with Mario Maker, right? So, so so if you don't get everybody up to speed here, because not everybody knows what a Ninji speed run is, um, in Super Mario Maker Two, Nintendo releases Nintendo made levels. Uh, they're events that only last a few days. I think it's a week. Um, they call it the Ninji speed run, and you have to try to get the best time in in the level. You have to beat the level as quickly as you can. You get awarded uh, bronze, silver, or gold, depending on uh, what percentile you're in. Every time they release one of these, I always try to get gold. It's a real fun way for me to open up. It gives me a reason to open up Mario Maker every once in a while. Um, it gives me a reason to live. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I get to dust off the old Mario Maker. Um, I always try to get gold. I think I've gotten it in 90% of them. Um but they, you never know if you're going to get gold until it's over. You just have to try to guess. They show you a graph yeah. of everybody's best time. Um, so so you can kind of guesstimate where, if you're going to get gold or not. And then if you get, if you, if you get bronze, silver, or gold, uh, you get a little coin that hovers around you uh, when you're playing multiplayer. So everybody knows when you're in multiplayer that you placed in the ninja. Um so this sort of solidifies that there's not going to be any more content for for Mario Maker. The last update that they did with the super worlds and stuff uh and 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 the um Mario 2 power up that was mm -hmm. the last um major update they said. Right. So every update they do now is probably going to be like a small update to like change it's probably just patches and stuff. Yeah, small things to change, like it's just mm -hmm. bug fixes, basically. Um, mm -hmm. No, like new content, and this is this is the end. This seems like the end for new content, unless well, no, they can't. No, they said the last update was the last big update, so this is it, and this sucks because I love Mario Maker. Yeah. 
And it seems like they're shooting Mario in the back of the head at the end of the month. <laughs> seems like yep. he's going bye bye. They're gonna yeah. They're gonna pull oh, well. Sopranos on him. We'll always have Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> Chris BX says, "Does your second place score land you in gold?" You know what? Let's find out right now. Well, all right. Um. I mean, I'd assume that. I mean, Mario Maker is how old is Mario Maker now? Came out in what, 2018? No, 2019. Yes, 2019. Because then we went to E3 and I was mad that. Uh, yeah. I was mad that they didn't have Mario Maker there. Yeah, 2019, June 2019. So that is two years? That's it? Yeah. Uh. Nobody ask any questions about um, the color of my Joy-Cons. You're not allowed. Oh, I just realized people are going to hear the game. Sorry, podcast listeners. <laughs> oh, boy. I'm trying to do the Super Mario World song. <laughs> Oh, yeah, good. good. Kate yeah. with 100 bits says, I have just learned that the Twitter Cinnamon Toast Crunch shrimp guy is married to Topanga from Boy Meets World. What? Really? And I needed to share this information. So I, I'm going to verify that source. <laughs> did, did you even... Oh, there's 42 minutes left in this speed run. So... Oh, so... I don't even know if I got gold yet. I need to wait 42 minutes. Ooh, I don't know. You got to get to the right of the hump, and this looks like I didn't really get... But, the, but it's pretty consistent. I might have gotten gold. I don't know. We'll see. I'll come back in 42 minutes. Um. So yeah, this guy found shrimp tails in his in those <laughs> crotch. And also, potentially, rat droppings. Um... And it reminds me of the time, Will, when I had a Cinnamon Toast Crunch milk and cereal bar. Yes. And there was a I remember, I remember spike this. in it. It was like a big chunk of what was about that big. Yep. It was huge. And they, they sent us uh, coupons for free boxes. Coupon. Yeah. Yep. Anyway, I'm sad about Mario Maker. Yeah. I've been having a lot of fun playing Mario World ROM hacks, though. We're we'll getting into that. Yeah. There was that yeah. one you played. It was it wasn't a ROM hack. It was like a brand new game. I forgot. Oh, I forgot what it was called? Flashback Super Mario Flashback. Yeah, that game is sick. It's only four levels, yeah. but it's really cool. Um, next we have Nerd talking about uh working on 3D All Stars and you know when I when I first saw this I thought. They were just making fun of the guy who like developed the technology, but I keep forgetting that nerd is short for Nintendo European Research and Development. <laughs> Looking at my ads, it's all it's all espresso stuff. Um and Kellogg's. <laughs> <laughs> um this is from Nintendo Everything. Nerd, otherwise known as Nintendo European Research and Development, has worked on some interesting projects over the years. The division has been involved with the DS Virtual Console for Wii U, the Nintendo 3DS Super Stable 3D, okay, emulators for the NES and SNES Classic Editions and more, so basically port and stuff. Most recently, Nerd contributed to Super Mario 3D All-Stars. A notice on the official website mentions how its own GameCube emulation technology was used as well as a deep learning engine to upgrade Super Mario Sh Sunshine's in-game videos to HD, which it, it did an interesting job. For Super Mario <laughs> Galaxy, Nerd offered, quote, graphics and audio emulation technologies. I remember when I first saw the cutscene, I was very confused. Because I was like, wait, this looks yeah. new. Like they re-rendered it or something. Uh, yeah, yeah. But then there, it still looked like muddy. And it was... It was uh, interesting. And apparently it was 
you know, basically upscaled. The full yeah. post reads, Nerds own Nintendo GameCube emulation technology ha uh, was used in Super Mario 3 All-Stars to bring Super Mario Sunshine to Nintendo Switch. One of the biggest challenges was emulating the Nintendo GameCube's old but powerful MPU microprocessor on the Switch's customized processor. A number of optimization tricks were used to, were needed to get the game to run at full speed. In addition, Nerd worked with the Super Mario 3D All-Stars team on several features to give Super Mario Sunshine a modern twist. These included 16x9 HD rendering, updated controller bindings for an optimal Joy-Con experience, and others. The in-game videos were also upgraded to HD using Nerd's own deep learning engine. Leveraging the similarities between Nintendo GameCube and Wii hardware architectures, Nerd also supported Super Mario Galaxy porting efforts by providing graphics and audio emulation technologies. I thought Nerd did the whole thing. I guess not. I know, I, I think they did the the tech behind the the NES Classic and the SNES Classic. Right. So they must be like Nintendo's go-to for reviving like their older games. I thought they did all of 3D All-Stars. But it, it seems like that. they're the ones who worked on uh, the GameCube emulation. So if we get more GameCube yeah. games, it'll be nerds. It'll be them. It'll be the, yeah. their fault if we get new GameCube yeah. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and also, I guess, uh, Wii stuff, because uh, they said the architecture is similar, so they also helped with Galaxy. Mm -hmm. So that's good to know. I didn't know that about the cutscenes, that it was like a deep learning sort of upscaled situation. That's well, interesting. I, a lot of cutscenes from back then were not in-engine. They were pre-rendered. Right. So whatever they were when they were made, that's how they would be you know, in future releases, unless they went back and like completely redid them. That's, well, that's why what I'm saying it. Cause when, yeah. when I first saw it, I had to pull up the GameCube version to see why it looked different or how it looked different. Yeah. And it looked different, but it didn't really look different. And that's why is because it was sort of like just upscaled. Mm -hmm. um, dark type. Thanks for the nine months. Hey, Wolf bros. I love you guys. Stay fresh. Thank you. Dark type. Nucker says, could have just used a retro arc and called it a day. They might have. <laughs> there's there's been cases where they uh where Nintendo has taken from uh open source emulators before. Yeah. Or or ROM. I think they took the Mario uh Yeah, the Super Mario Brothers ROM, I think on Virtual Console has like the text file of like the first Super Mario Brothers ROM ever released on the internet. Was it Sega that used uh, uh, Sega emulators? I think Some, so. Somebody, yeah, I don't think it was Nintendo, but yeah. somebody just straight no, up. No, no, from... Nintendo did. For Super Mario Brothers, the ROM that right. they used for Super Mario Brothers. No, that, did... that definitely happened. I'm, I'm talking about emulators. I think, I think Sega straight up just took an open source emulator. Yeah. Which, like, I, think, I mean, it's their stuff anyway, so, like, it's really not that big of a deal. The PlayStation Classic also has an open source emulator. Yes. Yeah. I, I don't... That doesn't surprise me one bit, because yeah. that thing sucks. Yeah. Um. Okay, next news. Activi Act yeah. Activist? No, Activision, Activision. on CEO makes... Uh, Activision talk about why the CEO makes too much money. Yeah. Uh, Activision Blizzard CEO Bobby Kotick routinely gets millions in stock bonuses every year based on how the company is doing. Uh, is that a real person? Yeah, that's, looks, that's him. He, he looks like a Mad Magazine drawing. Yeah. Uh, he's looked like that since Modern Warfare 1. <laughs> uh, now he's getting even more for a total payout of nearly $200 million, according to CTW Investment Group, a union pension fund advocacy organization. And it's all thanks to a clause in his contract that was recently triggered by the company's strong stock performance throughout the pandemic. As the Call of Duty maker CEO, Kodak 
uh, gets bonuses based on helping the company hit profit targets and other milestones. And because 2020 saw Activision Blizzard stock price jump dramatically as millions turn to games to distract themselves from during the pandemic, he's on track to collect all the incentive bonuses he missed in recent years, in addition to the tens of millions he already earns annually due to a shareholder value creation incentive clause in his contract. In March of uh, 2016, the company's stock price was around $32 a share. By March it, of last year, it had climbed to 56 And in the year since the pandemic began, it only climbed higher, peaking at over $100 at one point last month before settling back down to just under 92 Because the stock has remained over double what it was when Codex 2016 employment agreement went into effect uh, for over 90 days, the shareholder value creation incentive provision was triggered earlier this month on march 1st 2021 the performance conditions for the four-year performance period between january 1st 2017 through december 31st 2020 underlying these performances uh performance stock units awards were achieved at the maximum level reads activism activision blizzard's most recent sec filings while the increase in activision stock is somewhat commendable as we stated last year and continue to assert this achievement alone does not justify such as such a substantial pay outcome for the CEO. Uh, CTW investment group researcher Michael v- uh, Varner said in a statement in a phone call with Kotaku, Varner called a maximum level payout, the C-suite equivalent of running a six minute mile and Activision Blizzard is basically retroactively awarding Kodak gold medals for his performance pa- for his past performance based on the latest stock price. CCW Investment Group has been criticizing the CEO CEO pay at a lot of companies, including one of gaming's biggest. It called out pay in, pay inequity and Codex significant bonuses at last year's annual meeting of Activision Blizzard shareholders and has been pushing the company's board of directors to dial back just how rich it makes the company's decade-long boss. As Activision Blizzard boasts record sales numbers last year, uh, Bloomberg reported that some of its employees started sharing their personal pay information with one another internally to protest a lack of raises and proposition to the company's o- ongoing success. While the pandemic has made Kodak even richer, it hasn't put an end to the layoffs at Activision Blizzard. The company laid off roughly 800 people in early 2019, followed by hundreds more in the subsequent months, closing its the office of its uh, closing its French office. And just yesterday, it confirmed that somewhere between 50 and 190 more people would be let go, including its esports division, which has struggled over the last year during the ban on in-person gaming. Bloomberg reported that the most recent layoff of employees would receive health care benefits throughout the year as part of their severance package. They would also get a $200 <laughs> gift card to Battle.net. I guess so that they can still buy the latest Overwatch skins even while they're being out of a job and even while their former boss makes about is about to rake in millions in additional bonuses. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. So So too long didn't read um due to uh the su- significant success of Activision over the last few years they're rewarding the shareholders are rewarding CEO Bobby Kodak with $200 million while the company continues to lay off and fire massive amounts of people and their severance package includes healthcare, which is nice and a gift card to battle.net. Yeah. Where's this bonus coming from? Is it a, is it a yearly bonus? Is it because of the last few years? It sounds like, uh, it says total payout of nearly two hundred million dollars. So I am assuming that's all at once. Because, yeah, they laid off people in. They laid off eight hundred people in twenty nineteen. Yeah, uh, and then hundreds more in the subsequent months. Uh, they laid off fifty to a hundred and ninety people in twenty twenty. Um, when they close their French office, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, Activision is doing great because the whole games industry is doing yeah. great. Uh, 
this spits in the face of a lot of people get given the ceo yeah. 200 million i mean I, the ceo yeah. i mean this guy's a piece of shit but yeah this uh, if if you're if you're doing things to make the company a lot of money you deserve a little bit of a bonus 200 right. million dollars it's not that's too much of a bonus in the middle of a global pandemic <laughs> yeah when your employees are being laid off yeah uh i don't know about that i don't know if uh, that that is too much money yes. yeah yeah uh f- you when you I work know, at a company like, you get a christmas bonus it's like a thousand bucks you're like oh cool this is great i'm gonna go, that, I'm gonna go buy i'm gonna go tax- buy two playstations they tax your christmas bonus so it's really it's 500 bucks <laughs> this guy like what's his salary is his salary two hundred thousand dollars a year uh two hundred million dollars no his salary is i'm pretty sure it's several million dollars a year he's already like the one of the richest if not the richest man in all of video games aside from like gabe newell but like he just keeps making cartoonish amounts of money while the people who actually make the games for him are struggling so so why like who says he gets 200 million he says uh, <laughs> <laughs> like there's a lot of questions here that i don't understand about uh, big big corporations like this uh so basically he he has a tw- an employment agreement in his contract stemming back from 2016 um, that says if the stocks remain over a certain point for a certain period of time, he's going to get uh, a bonus uh, of X amount of money. And according to the statement, it, um, he achieved that at the maximum level. Okay. And I guess the maximum level is Two, worth 200 million dollars okay so that makes sense it just doesn't make sense why they would make a contract like that <laughs> yeah uh maybe they were like this is never gonna happen we're never gonna make this much money and then global pandemic happened everybody's home everybody's buying video games yeah in 2019 codex total compensation at activision blizzard uh fell to 30.1 million dollars down from his 2018 package of $31 million in salary, bonus, perks, stock, and options. 85% of his 20 of his 2018 compensation came from stocks and options. It's I mean, I'd imagine Activision is worth like billions of dollars. You know, yeah. so so this is a guy who's running a, a multi-billion dollar company. So like mm-hmm. I understand that like his salary is probably really high and uh his bonuses are probably really high. But again, two hundred million dollars after all of this nasty stuff's been happening, that seems weird. He it's it's not so much his salary, although his salary is ridiculously high. It's all the compensations he gets for right. leading. According to Wikipedia, he earned three hundred and nineteen times more than the average Activision Blizzard employee's salary of ninety seven thousand dollars a year. Mm-hmm. 319 times the average Activision Blizzard salary. He's the boss. I don't even think Bezos makes made that much. <laughs> like, no, definitely. Well, probably. well he's yeah. got all these weird, like, you know, loopholes and stuff. Yeah. Like he, t- like, he doesn't get paid. He gets paid through stock options or some bullshit. True. Yeah. Um. I don't know. The, the 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 big controversy here is that like you know there's people who are struggling like he's got employees who are struggling or laid off yeah and uh, he's taken he's eating that much um, yeah but I mean if it's performance based then he earned it according to the yeah. contract it just I should, think- that just shouldn't have been uh, an option it should have been way lower than that Jesus Christ yeah I think the worst part about all this is I am now learning via Wikipedia. That he is a native of Long Island. Ooh. And and that hurts. I, I reject him his status as a Long Islander. Uh yeah, no, you got yeah, no, he he's we disassociate ourselves. Yeah. I what this tells me is that Activision 
if this is performance based, Activision made a lot of money. So, I mean, yeah. it's his fault because he's the CEO of Activision. He could do whatever he wants. Um, but Activision, that means Activision made that much more money in total. Yeah. So, uh, they deserve to be giving these people uh, a little bit more than, uh, yeah. than uh, what is it? Than $200 gift cards to battle.net when they, uh, when they lay them off. Yeah. I mean, healthcare for a year. Nice. Good on you. Yeah. Maybe, maybe a little more than that. You're giving this guy $200 million. That means you have that X amount more money than that. Um, anyway. What else do we have to talk about here? We got Microsoft buys Discord, which is probably should have been a little higher in the chat. Uh oh, yeah. Uh oh, Bloomberg. <laughs> a Bloomberg report that I can't read. Yeah, so the uh this Gizmodo article underneath it. I, cl I clicked it. Yeah, Microsoft is currently in discussions to potentially buy the chat platform Discord, according to a new report from Bloomberg News that cites an unnamed source. The sale, which is far from a done deal, could be worth over $10 billion, but Discord is just as likely to go public if it doesn't get an acceptable offer, according to Bloomberg sources. This Bloomberg very app that, that we are using to talk to each yes. other right here. <laughs> uh, Bloomberg notes that Discord has been talking to other prospective buyers in the past, including Amazon and Epic Games, though the timeline for those discussions wasn't made clear. Both Microsoft and Discord did not immediately respond to email inquiries from Gizmodo on late Monday. Microsoft has been rumored to Microsoft has been rumored to almost buy up a number of different tech properties in recent years, though some of the most high profile have not gone through. Last year, Microsoft purchased Zenimax Media, which owns Bethesda Softworks, for seven point five billion dollars. Bethesda produces uh, several high profile video game franchises, including Doom and Fallout. Uh, Microsoft was named as an interested party uh, to buy TikTok back in 2020 when the Trump regime was trying to get the Chinese-based dance app to sell to an American company. The TikTok sale ultimately fizzled when the Biden administration took over the White House. Microsoft has also reportedly as also reportedly interested in buying Pinterest, uh, though that deal also hasn't happened, at least not yet. Would Discord go public? That's certainly another possibility, according to Bloomberg. And if that's the end game, it may, it might make sense to leak a bunch of news about a potential $10 billion sales price. Discord uh, was valued at roughly $7 billion recently as November. But what's a few billion dollars here or there? Trump regime versus Biden administration. <laughs> Damn. I mean, I, I think mean, that tells you all you need to know. I know. Um, I was I've unrelated, but I read somewhere uh, somebody talked to like the CEO of TikTok, and they're like, "So whatever happened to the the Microsoft buyout?" And they said, "You know, after like a few months, we just stopped hearing from the Trump presidency. Like we we sent them questions that we had answered, and they just didn't respond. They just like forgot about us." Yeah, because they probably realized like, "Oh, this isn't as big of a deal as we thought it was going to be." Well, no, somebody else probably got under his skin and went after them instead yeah they probably realized oh we're wrong about this let's not let's not let's pretend like nothing happened you're giving them too much credit anyway you're right um so yeah uh so, so, so okay just... microsoft absolutely should buy discord uh skype's gotta go yeah delete skype, skype from existence skype is shockingly bad and they ruined it. Like, like, like yeah. not, not that they... They ruined their chances. Yeah. Because now we're all stuck at home. And Skype's already been around. It's been around for years. Whenever yeah. people talk about doing video calls, they say, are you Skyping in? Are you going to Skype yeah. with that person? It yeah. was like, Skype that's like the thing. Something happened last year. And everybody started saying Zoom. Yeah. I, I don't know how that I happened. Tried when my friends and I tried to set up, like we use Google Hangout and Google Meet, but first we tried to use Skype and nobody could get it to work. Like it's nobody, horrible. like we, we had like different accounts and we had to like merge accounts and stuff. It was, a, it was a nightmare. Uh, Google I, I Meets don't has some serious happened. issues. I, I like Google Hangouts. 
it's weird because there's Google Hangouts and Google Meet. Mm -hmm. They're two separate things, even though they should really just have changed the name of Google Hangouts. Um, I've never had a problem with either of them, though. Discord is great, too, except today. Discord is great. Weird. Uh, Zoom, I've used once or twice. It's not bad. It's fairly easy to use. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't understand how they shit the bed with Skype so bad. Yeah, I think Microsoft buying uh, Discord would be a win for everybody. Uh, here's another case of a big company buying small thing, and then who knows what's going to happen to it. Yeah. But Microsoft's been, well, I mean, I shouldn't say that, because they bought Skype and then shit the bed with that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I mean, I I I think this is there's a lot that Microsoft could offer Discord and vice versa. Uh, yeah. Discord, uh, Microsoft was already the first console to give support to to Discord, even though it was mm-hmm. just uh, now you can see what games I'm playing. Like if I'm playing yeah. Call of Duty, it'll come up. Um, but that would be great to have Discord on an Xbox to be able to actually talk through Discord on the Xbox. Yeah. Um, I mean, Xbox Live Party Chat like works very well mm-hmm. on its own, but it's because there's now this like desire for you know cross-platform play and you know playing against PC and other systems, I, something like Discord, um, which is available you know on multiple devices, uh, can facilitate that play feature. So you can play against people on other systems and all log into the same app to talk to rather than you know have to rely on the built-in microsoft's uh software talking to the built-in sony software and whatnot yeah i think that uh microsoft would also be really good at allowing other systems to utilize discord yeah microsoft would be good at playing nice with playstation and nintendo to try to get them to use discord and yeah right now this uh discord hasn't it looks like they've made no leeway on trying to get Discord on Nintendo or trying to get Nintendo to want to use it. Um, yeah, that doesn't but surprise me. <laughs> Microsoft might actually be able to, uh, you know, uh, have some influence there, at least at mm-hmm. least more than than Discord has. Um, so that would, I think this is this this sounds like great news all 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 around. This would be this would be good for everybody. And I'd assume that Discord would still run the same as it always does. Like, uh, the same people would... I don't think they would, like, replace the teams or anything. Yeah. I feel like everything would would more or less be the same. They'll just Mm -hmm. add more resources. Discord is... It's got a lot of potential to be a Slack competitor. There's, like, a lot about Discord that is not just video chat and not just voice chat. Yeah. Um. So. Yeah. Yeah. Also, to, it's like I know for business, Microsoft Teams is like the go-to communication app because it's got you know instant messaging and video calls and whatnot. So you know, maybe Discord integration could help because Teams is not a great platform either. So Discord could help, you know, with that aspect as well. Um, speaking of Microsoft, Microsoft yes, rebrands uh, Xbox Live to Xbox Network. Microsoft is rebranding Xbox Live to Xbox Network. Instances of the new branding started appearing in the Xbox dashboard as uh, recently for beta testers with clips being uploaded to Xbox Network instead of Xbox Live. Uh, Microsoft has now confirmed the name change. Uh, Xbox Network refers to the underlying Xbox Online service which was updated in the Microsoft service agreement, uh, says a Microsoft spokesperson in a statement to The Verge. The update from Xbox Live to Xbox Network is intended to distinguish the underlying service from Xbox Live Gold memberships. Microsoft has used Xbox Live to refer to its underlying Xbox service since it's launched 18 years ago. Larry Herb, better known as Major Nelson, has been known as Xbox Live's Major Nelson for years, but Herb now refers to himself as Xbox's Major Nelson. Uh, I, it, I think that they do need to change some names around, like uh, Xbox Live. I always, cons- I always consider that gold. 
Like I always think when I think of Xbox Live, I think of Xbox Live Gold. Right. But that's not well, really what it is. Well, because it used to be because when it launched on the original Xbox, it was just it was called Xbox Live and you needed an Xbox Live membership to use it. On the 360, that's when that's when they implemented like the free version, which was silver, and right. then gold was the paid version. And then they for the Xbox One, they basically did away with silver, but they kept the name Xbox Live Gold. Right. Um so it's just it's weird because like we've been saying Xbox Live for like 18 years. <laughs> but there's also there's the whole thing where they might be getting rid of Xbox Live entirely. Like 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 the they might be getting rid of Xbox Gold. They might be getting rid of that in lieu of the ultimate subscription and, well, and game pass and stuff hints at a name change originally appeared back in august after microsoft updated its service agreement at the time microsoft said it wasn't rebranding the service and had no plans to discontinue xbox live gold instead microsoft uh went on to announce a price hike for xbox live gold that the company was forced to quickly reverse microsoft is now planning to drop the subscription requirement for free-to-play games on its Xbox network in the coming months. Games like Fortnite will no longer require an Xbox Live Gold uh, membership as a result, but Microsoft hasn't yet confirmed exactly when the paywall will, will be removed. I still think they're getting rid of Gold. I think eventually it's gonna you're going to get an ultimate subscription and that's it. You're going to Game Pass and that's it. That's what I think. No, I, I feel like they're, gonna, they're still going to heap xbox live gold maybe they won't call it that but mm -hmm. they'll keep that as a separate thing for people who just want to play multiplayer games you know they don't necessarily want right. the whole uh game pass and x cloud well th their part. their plan was to make it so expensive that you just want ultimate <laughs> right and i think the backlash proved to them that people don't want that that's so why i think gonna... it's just gonna go away no, because if there was a backlash to the price hike, I I wouldn't be surprised if there would be a, also be a backlash to just taking it away. I think their goal is to make ultimate the better value. To make ultimate to make you think like, "Oh, I might as well just get the ultimate subscription then." That's right. their goal. And I think they'll get there eventually. I don't think they're going to get there the way they wanted to, which was to um, hike up the price of gold. I don't know, because because what's Game Pass Ultimate now? Fifteen dollars a month. I will look it up. I have no idea. And and there's no like you can't buy like a year subscription. I got it for a dollar, but then yes. it probably went up from there. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure it's like fifteen fifteen dollars a month regularly. Gamers are cheap. And they will go with whatever is cheapest. <laughs> Game Pass Ultimate, $30 for three months. For three months. Game Pass. Is this Ultimate? No. Regular Game Pass is $120 for a year. Yeah. Versus 60 for Xbox Live Gold. For a year. Right. For a year. Right. That's not ultimate yeah. though. Ultimate's probably a lot more money for a year. Right. I'm talking about ultimate. Yeah. Game Pass Ultimate is fourteen dollars a month. Or thirty dollars for three mm -hmm. months. Are you sure that's ultimate? It says up. Oh, that might be an old one. Because yeah, you, yeah, you click right? on it, it times out. It says ultimate, but it's it's not Yeah, because regular Game real. Pass is ten dollars a month. Oh, this is. I think you used to be able to buy this, and now you can't. Yeah. Mm. So regular Game Pass is ten dollars a month. Ultimate is fifteen dollars a month. Yeah. And gold is how much? Gold is ten dollars a month, or you can get it for like sixty dollars a year. Okay. So ultimate's already a better better value. Ultimate, look, ultimate is a good value, but I know that like there are some people who will look for, who like would rather like save some money and don't necessarily want you know to pay fifteen dollars a month for Game Pass and 
Xbox Live. They'll take one or the other. And if they, you know, just play Call of Duty and they want to play online with their friends, then they don't need Game Pass Ultimate. They just need Xbox Live Gold. Right. Yeah, I'm, I'm, listen, I'm not here to argue that gold isn't a good thing to have around. I think gold is a great thing to have around. The more options, the better. Yeah. I just think that Microsoft is trying to get rid of gold. And, and, I it, think they, and they tried once and it failed. And I think they're going to try again. I think they would be foolish to do that. The Verge lets you listen to their articles in like a podcast form. That's pretty cool. You can like click. On I've the always been curious to do that, but I never did. Let's freaking do it right now. I wonder if it sounds like a person or if it's going to be a robotic. Network. Why did it stop? Microsoft is rebranding Xbox Live to Xbox Network. Instances Xbox of Live. <laughs> so we already know. We already know it's a freaking robot. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, that's funny. All right, quick. Let's rapid fire through these other ones. We're running out of time. Okay. Uh, we're getting more free games coming to PlayStation Play at Home. Uh, previously, they announced, I think it was Ratchet and Clank is going to be free. Um but they've added, they're going to make Ratchet and Clank free so that you can play at home instead of going out. But now they're adding uh, Rez, Abzu, The Witness, Enter the Gungeon, Subnautica, Moss, Astrobot, uh, Paper Beast, and Thumper. That's a lot. Yeah, starting March 25th. So uh, Thursday. Um, I've wanted to try Thumper. Uh, I wanted to try The Witness. So, what is this? Play at home? Play at home. So, last year they did, um... Oh, and Horizon Zero Dawn. That's the other one. Oh, uh, that's, last big, year that's they, the biggest deal of the whole thing. Yeah. Last year they did this thing, they did this play at home initiative where, like, instead of going out and uh, doing things during a pandemic, you stay at home and play games. So... These are the games that they're going to just give to you for free. I don't even think you need to be a PlayStation Plus subscriber. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, you, you just they just give it to you. So first it was it was uh, Ration Clank for PS4. Um, did I redeem that copy? I should check to see if I redeemed that copy. But now you're also getting... Uh, Res, Abzu, The Witness, Enter the Gungeon, Subnautica, Moss, Astrobot, uh, Paper Beast, and Thumper. Uh, Moss, Astrobot, Paper Beast, and Thumper are PSVR games, I should clarify. Um, and also Horizon Zero Dawn will be free. Moss so, is one of the best VR experiences you could have. You should play it. It's great. Yes. Uh, yeah, so this is good. This, this, uh, As far as I know, these do not require PlayStation Plus subscription so if you don't have that no worries just get it um and also in participating countries we're also offering an extended trial of funimation or wakanim uh depending on the region a joint venture between sony pictures entertainment and aniplex of japan so there you go all you weebs out there yeah good job <laughs> Next, these video games right. in 2021 uh, for the World Video Game Hall of Fame. Wow, here they are. Crazy. All right, so yeah, so it's uh, StarCraft, Farmville, Where in the World is Carmen Sandiego, uh, uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator, Call of Duty 1, Animal Crossing, Portal, uh, frig is that one, uh, Pole Position, uh, Pole Hotel position! Football. Uh, Tron, StarCraft, uh, did I say Portal? Yes. FIFA International Soccer. Animal Crossing. Animal Crossing, yeah. GameCube. Animal uh, Crossing, Call of Duty, Farmville, FIFA International Soccer, Guitar Hero, Mattel Football, Microsoft Flight Simulator, Pole Position, Portal, StarCraft, Tron, and Where in the World is Carmen San Diego. So, so, so is, are these the first nominees for this? These are, these are the nominees for this year. Okay. The, these are not all the games that are getting in. These are just the ones that are uh, of the games that could get in. These are the finalists. 
in previous years, four to six games have gone to enter the Hall of Fame. 2020's inductees were Minecraft, Bejeweled, <laughs> Centipede, and King's Quest. Yes. Okay, I think that all of these deserve to be in. Yes. Except FIFA International Soccer. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, to be to be fair, uh, FIFA now is the most popular game in the world. True. True. So, fine. Fine. Mattel football. We had that. What? Our dad had that and like stole it from grandpa's house. <laughs> For what? It's a handheld. Uh, it's like the earliest handheld. Oh. Yeah. oh. Should see if we still have that. I I've never seen this before in my life, Will. Oh come on. Oh come on. Uh, but yeah, no, every one of these is it deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. These are all big yeah. deal games. Um, put them all in, I say. <laughs> Even Farmville. I think Farmville deserves it. Yeah, Farmville for a while was like the biggest game in the world. Yeah. So. It was like a Pokemon Go type situation. Yeah. Uh, okay. Next. Uh, rumors suggest that the PS3, PS Vita, and PlayStation Portable stores aren't long for this world. According to a source familiar with the situation verified by thegamer.com, the stores are due Ooh. to close down in July, or starting in July. The announcement is planned for the end of this month. Look at uh, the jpeg uh Vita they have here. PSP no, and PS3 that. stores will close July 2nd, while the PS Vita store will stay open until August 27th. After those dates, you will no longer be able to purchase digital copies of games or DLC for any of the Sony consoles mentioned above. Uh, that's sad, and that sucks. <laughs> this, this has not been officially announced yet, but it's no. going to happen, probably. Yeah. Um, it's unfortunate, because once that happens... You know, you'll the only way to get games for these systems then will be to track down the physical copies, and there are a lot of games on all those systems that don't exist physically. Yeah, we all saw this coming. You know, like yeah, this is why I try to have big fat hard drives on my things so I could uh, download all the stuff that I need to. Yeah, and and what's what's also concerning is that what does this mean? For, like, if you do get a physical copy of the game, does that mean you can no longer get uh, patches for it? I yes, that that's probably what that means. Yeah, so like if I buy a copy of Uncharted and I stick it in my PS3, is it going to download the latest patch for it or not? Probably not. They should they should leave up the integral patches, like ones that are like game breaking, right? You know that yeah. you need for the game. Um, I'm also re also are you going to be able to re-download your games after this? I'm pretty sure I got everything on on our ps3 that needs to be there i yeah. have our ps3 yeah i'm pretty sure everything so, that needs to be there is there yeah so uh, maybe this Actually, weekend i'll go through it and i've downloaded really a bunch play, of stuff i didn't really play the ps3 that much yeah um the vita yeah everything's already downloaded on it i don't except yeah. for some of the playstation plus stuff yeah some of that might not be on there i i haven't touched that thing in forever yeah uh you have and had there's eight... no go ahead no uh, read what he says because i have a response to it. you have <laughs> had eight years to get your ps3 games through though since the ps4 came out right but once this once they shut down the ps3 store i will have no way of getting access to those ps3 games or playing those ps3 games if my ps3 dies there's currently the only way to play ps3 games is to own a ps3 and if my system dies, I got to get another one. Am I going to be able to log into my account and re-download my games? There's all these questions that aren't being answered right now because this is all just rumor and speculation, but this is a big problem for, you know, as we inch closer to an all digital future. Mm -hmm. So I think it would behoove Sony to try and get some sort of backwards compatibility with the PS3 up and running on the PS5 because the PS5 sure as hell can run PS3 games. It better at this point. 
you know, say what you will about Microsoft, but at least they ha- they're keeping the Xbox 360 store up and running, mostly because you can play a lot of those games on your Xbox One and Xbox Series. But, you know, at least it's there. Speaking of transferring things <laughs> between consoles, generations. So, uh, transferring of a save file from Marvel Marvel's Avengers from PS4 to PS5 is apparently a nightmare. I, I, uh, wow. Who could have ever seen this coming? All right. So here's what you have to do. First, you have to launch the fully patched PS4 version of Marvel's Avengers and go to the save migration tab on the main menu to initiate the upload. Once the migration is done, you need to launch the PS5 version where you will be prompted to download the data. Here's the annoying part. Even if you have the PS4 and the PS5 version of the game on the same console, um, that's a total of 120 gigabytes, by the way, save migration is necessary to boot the save file on the PS5 version. Additionally, you need to download the latest update for the PS4 version so that you can download the PS5 version. This means if you're running the PS4 version of the game, that has not been updated, you won't see the save migration tab and you won't be able to transfer your save data. The upshot is this. Do not delete the PS4 version of Marvel's Avengers before transferring your save to the PS5. Once you've successfully imported your save into the PS5 version, you can safely delete the PS4 version from your console. There's a cocktail of things happening here. You got... Yes. You already have the awful Marvel's Avengers. (laughs) And now you have the awful uh, PlayStation 5 um, uh, backwards compatibility. Yeah. So you have those two things butting heads here. Yeah. You, uh, so you basically you have to download both, both versions of the game onto your PS5, launch the PS4 version, activate save migration, then launch the PS5 version, activate save migration, and you're, then your save will migrate. Uh, yeah. None of that should be necessary. No. You uh, need, you need they, I like how they said the the awful part is blah blah blah. The awful part is yeah. needing both versions of the game at all. Yeah. You should just be able to download the PlayStation 5 version and then that's it. Yeah. And then you're done. None of that other stuff should be necessary. Uh they also they also say something similar uh occurred with Insomniac Spider-Man um remedies control as well um and of course save transfers from xbox one to series x are automatic via microsoft smart delivery all i know is that it was a nightmare trying to get playstation 5 versions of games on my playstation 5 and on my xbox it just said optimize for series x and it just worked and the save file worked everything just worked it's it's unbelievable how wrong sony got this <laughs> unbelievable yeah they really they, I, I, st- I still think the playstation 5 is the console this generation that most people should be getting i just don't think it's 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 not better it's no. not better <laughs> it just has Absolutely. yeah it just has a different set of games that i think most people would be more interested in yeah but um, I feel like if they don't fix these issues, I think enough people will turn. Yeah. Yeah. I already I play, enough, I play my Xbox way more. I've, I've seen a lot more. of articles saying the same thing. Yeah. Um, and the Series S exists. And it's a lot cheaper yes. and it's a much yes. better entry point for most people. Um. Anyway, we're done with all this stuff. Yes, yes. Now it is. Y'all, you know, you know what it means. I know what it means. Tweet of the week. Tweet of the week. Tweet of the week. I had a search for this while we were in the middle of uh, (laughs) in the middle of our talking. So there's two tweets that are basically the same. This was one that blew up. It's from uh, Tired Mario. I didn't realize that. Um, yeah, I ate the food, and it's a picture of a really bad-looking iced coffee. 
Um, th- but there's another tweet that's the same formula, and it's bitches uh-huh. be like, mmm, breakfast, and it's an iced coffee and a vape. <laughs> Ugh. That's funny. I got a. What did I find? I, it wasn't on Twitter, but it was on Instagram. It was from the Hard Times News. Man convinced coffee tastes better after making it in a much more inconvenient way. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, that's me. <laughs> I'm that guy. Uh, yep. He uh, said that to dad because he likes to make fun of me. What did he call every time I'm making coffee while we're doing our little uh, uh, Sunday uh, uh, FaceTimes? Yeah. He calls me a soy boy. I I don't know who taught him that word, but I want to hit them in the knees with a crowbar. It's not soy milk. It's oat milk, dad. Yeah. Uh, Everybody in the chat's people, like, I feel attacked. <laughs> most people call me crazy for hand dicing each individual bean, and some people thought I was losing it when I was caught massaging a bag of coffee grounds while singing Is This Love by White Snake. My own All mother right. almost disowned me after I took her Keurig out in the backyard and beat her with a spiked bat. I wouldn't go that far. Uh, no, but I mean, the headline does... <laughs> I do use a hand grinder sometimes. That yeah. that does happen. I've since upgraded. It's slightly more convenient now. <laughs> um. All right, now we'll talk to you people. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, if you left a comment over on our YouTube channel, Wolf Den Podcast, this is the part of the show where we will finally answer you. And of course, ladies and gentlemen watching us right now, please start leaving your questions and comments because we will get to them when we are done with everybody else. Um, I know, uh, encrypted squid gave us a bit before and said, finally killing the windows live. Why finally? And mecha dragon with a hundred bits said, Bob, since you're a huge smash brothers fan, have you ever tried the indie smash brothers like game rivals of aether? Um, there's that in brawl hollow. Um, I haven't played either because like, sometimes I like, indie games that are inspired by big budget games if that big budget game hasn't been around for a while you know there's like a there's like a gap in the market um i the thing with like rivals of aether and brawlhalla is that why wouldn't i just play smash brothers the bigger budget version the one that they took everything from (laughs) right you know that's how i've used and i feel the same way about genshin impact like that's supposed to be like Breath of the Wild. Why wouldn't I just play Breath of the Wild? Yeah. It's a free to play Breath of the Wild. That to me sounds like a worse Breath of the Wild. <laughs> um and I'm not like I I like Smash Brothers a lot, but most of the reason why I like it is because it's Nintendo and has all the cool characters and stuff. So right. uh same thing with like uh Temtem, the the game that was yeah. supposed to be like Pokemon. Yeah. Like I don't like pokemon's mechanics i just like it because it's pokemon you know Mm -hmm. so uh there's more to it than just the mechanics that make me interested in something like smash brothers right plus i Uh, do not want to learn a whole new fighting game i do not want to do that (laughs) rivals of aether is apparently a spiritual sequel to super smash land a fan-made remake of super smash brother fan-made demake sorry of super smash brothers is that a flash game uh it is it's uh designed to look like a game boy game i think it is a flash game yeah and apparently uh brawlhalla has like a lot of crossover characters and apparently one of the characters from rivals of ether you can get in brawlhalla can't you get rayman in one of them maybe that's brawlhalla yeah brawlhalla yeah in brawlhalla you can get uh, Shovel Knight characters, Rayman characters, Hellboy characters, WWE characters, Adventure Time, uh, Steven Universe, Lara Croft, Ben Adventure 10, Time. and The Walking Dead. Wow. Yeah. Um, last week, Matthew Cullen says, I want to go- get into Ninja Turtles, but I don't know where to start. Any advice? Uh, f- the, the 1990 movie, hands down. Um, if you want to start reading comics, the IDW series... Um, the current one from like 2011, I think is when it started, is probably the best incarnation of the Ninja Turtles ever. 
So start at issue one of that and just don't ever stop. Um, in terms of the TV show, uh, the 2003 series is very good, and that's on Paramount+. Plus. The 2012 Nickelodeon show, which is also very good, is also is on uh, Hulu. Um, yeah. Uh, f- ever since Nickelodeon bought the Ninja Turtles, they have been great shepherds of that franchise. So anything you want of Ninja Turtles, you really can't go wrong. But I would say the 90s, the original 1990 movie, um, either the 03 or the 2012 show, because I know where those they are streaming. I don't know if the original series is streaming anywhere. And the IDW comics start from issue one and just don't ever stop. Uh, last week was the week where I talked. I said some dumb shit about uh, frame rates and uh, an input lag, <laughs> uh, so I uh, expect some hate for that, and it's probably yeah. deserved. Uh, Doofer says you completely ignored the Bethesda news with all of the titles hitting Game Pass exclusively and F- FPS boost, but at least you got to stroke your ego for thirty minutes. That's because I talked about uh the the modder who who yeah. miraculously put Tenet on five Game Boy cartridges it was amazing. Whoever did that did an yeah. amazing job. Um, I didn't think there was any. I heard about the Bethesda news. Yeah, I really didn't think it was that big of a deal. I mean, we talked about exclusivity briefly because when they announced that the deal was finalized, that some games would be exclusive to Xbox and PC. That shouldn't be a surprise. We, we, well, we talked about that before. We talked about that already. We already when when they you're right when they announced yeah all of that stuff. We said I'm sure some games will be uh will be uh exclusive you know, and exclusive and some won't. When they finalized the deal, they put that in their press release. Yeah, which which everybody started write articles about. Yeah, and we just thought, duh. Yeah, like it's not a big deal. Uh, like we already also, we already assumed that that was going to happen. Like uh, f- the the titles hitting Game Pass and getting FPS boosts, big deal. Obviously, they were going to go on Game Pass because that's why Microsoft bought Bethesda to boost up their Game Pass, um, a library and FPS boost again. No, duh. They just launched a whole bunch of brand new next generation systems. They're going to want their brand new toys to look and play as best they can. So RP Yoshi says, do is is watching the Wolf Den podcast and complains when you talk about Wolf Den news. (laughs) (laughs) Listen, other podcasts were talking about is the the in, the insane awesome genius modder who put Tenon on five Game Boy cartridges. So why not yeah. us talk about it? You know, Tenon is. I, but again, the the shit you want us to talk about it, it it's really not a big deal. Yeah, Tenon's two and a half hours, right? And you put yes. that on five almost GBA exactly cartridges? almost exactly two and a half yeah. hours. So I guess what does that mean? Like the Snyder Cut eight. would be eight GBA. Yeah, correct. Which is what I should have done. I should have done that because <laughs> that's well, the same. I mean, fo- that's the same. That's a square. So yeah, that would have probably looked better. I mean, as soon as it comes out on Blu-ray, you want me to get it and we'll we'll do it. Absolutely not. I'm never doing that again. <laughs> um, just a hair. I think I speak for everyone when I say we don't care what sponsors you have as long as it is entertaining and not Raid Shadow Legends. I don't think you. I don't think, I don't think you are okay with any sponsor that I take. <laughs> I don't think that's true. I think I, if I take a sponsorship for something that's really weird, you'd be like, "That's a weird one," you know. Like if it's something like that, I definitely would not never be into. And I'm trying to shill it to you. You would be like, "That's a little weird, Bob." Which is why I don't do that. Which is why I I turn down things that I think are real weird. Yeah. Um. That was in reference to last week when I talked about a, an alcohol sponsorship. Yeah. Um, anyway, Xavier Meyer says, don't forget one article stated so confidently you were 25. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, don't know, I, don't, I have no idea uh, where that, that came w- from. Yeah. There's nowhere on the internet that says that I'm 25. Um. 
WD Mystic says, Denovo and other anti-cheat software will literally block me because I got RGB software like Logitech Gware, Corsair IQ, and the worst of the matter cause I got issues with it more is Asus built in RGB software when you get an Asus motherboard. Some games will not play on my PC till I disable them in Task Manager. You mean like the colored lights on your PC? Yeah. That's the, I guess the software that programs that, Denuvo's like, nah, man, fuck you. That's weird. Yeah. That's weird. Uh, Hot Pancake says, oh, I forgot about the boner pills. Great ad for them. Some Listen, lots <laughs> of people need boner pills. It's not something to be yeah. upset about. And I think me talking about them is doing a good for, is doing more good than bad. That's why I did that. Mm-hmm. Um, also, let me tell you, Manscaped, that's my new favorite, uh, thing that I got turned on to through a sponsorship. <laughs> I used to use this giant scary razor on my balls. And now this thing, yeah. the, the freaking buzzer thing is, uh, is incredible. It's, it's, it, it, it's so gentle. Um, I used to use scissors. I did too. Until one day where I, yep. <laughs> where I was like, never again. <laughs> Let me tell you, they don't stop bleeding. No, <laughs> never. No, they don't. That's why it's so important to maybe spend a little extra bucks and get yeah. something that is going to. Uh, I might, I might just have to use that promo code and just go for it. It is a little uh, pricey, but it I is. Mean, That's why I've always held off. But but you, if you get the pack, you also get the nose thing, and the nose thing is also for us. I have a nose. Yeah, it's it's fantastic. I was using these tweezers. No, actually, I used scissors in my nose. <laughs> yeah. Um, GCXC says, seriously, the lawnmower 3.0 will not cut your sack. Also, I like Manscaped because they would let me say things like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway. Uh. Elite Peperomia says, sometimes I forget that the majority of your audience is probably male. Uh, like 95%. Yeah. 90 to 95%. Um, and almost exclusively over 18. So I didn't feel oh, bad at all about saying, yeah. uh, talking about boulder pills or anything. Oh, so why do you have a problem talking about alcohol then? If because, the I, is... because there's a chance... That I, that I shill this, this deal with an alcohol thing. Like, oh, if you use my link, you will get 50% off your first two bottles of wine. And then somebody gets two bottles of wine and goes, these are incredible. And then has them every night for the rest of the year. And then drives the, and their family leaves them and they drive themselves into alcoholism. And I can't I, have that on me. <laughs> I don't think that that is a... That is a scenario. That's a real possibility. Okay. It's a real thing that could happen, and I, I can't have that on me. <laughs> it, you, 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 can't, you can't say you're an influencer, right? But yeah. not be an influencer when it's not convenient. You know what I mean? I, I, yeah, I get it. Uh, do you play your Switch more than your Xbox Series X? Uh, yes, absolutely. I do play my Series X a lot because I do play a lot of Wars. I'll be honest, when I'm not making content or Twitch streaming or whatever, I am playing my Xbox. I very rarely play my Switch when I'm just yeah. offline. I gotta, I gotta talk to Edward because he's been fucking trying real hard. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about the fact that Sakurai took to Twitter today to celebrate uh, Kid Icarus Uprising's ninth anniversary? He also commented that a remake or sequel would be difficult. I think that he is just... I think that he really is very proud of Kid Icarus Uprising, and he is just trying to bring it up again and celebrating it. Yeah, I don't that, think that, it, was a pet, that was a pet project of his. Yeah, I don't think it means anything, to be honest. Yeah. I also don't think uh, that game was that good. 
it, in terms of like a sequel or a, a remake of it being difficult, it would it would be difficult a because it didn't sell very well, uh, and b um, that game was designed to like around the 3ds, so any like new version of it would have to be like radically different. DPR nineteen eighty four. Thank you for the Prime subscription. Uh, Dante, no, damn dynamite. Are you any good at Warzone? Debatable, but <laughs> put on notifications. I'm gonna play it. I'm probably playing that tomorrow with uh, so Wednesday with Misclick and Wood. Probably. I really want to play that unless they veto it. Um. He always dies in the gulag. I'm going to time you out, Nucker. I've never died in the gulag before in my life. <laughs> uh, oh, you were supposed to talk about the Snyder Cut today. Uh, I know. But I might have something ready by tomorrow. Oh, I didn't know about this. Yeah. So, if you, it, I mean, I could give you all a sneak peek. Um, but no. if you want to no. you you know, follow me on Twitter... Well, I'll post the link to my full thoughts on it. If make sh as long as I make sure to finish it by 10 a.m. on Wednesday, it's like the good old days. Oh shit! So, it's not gonna be. It's not gonna be the same. It's very unprofessional. <laughs> but okay, uh, whatever. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I might. I might have. I might have something for you. <laughs> well, on that note, thank you everybody for hanging out. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put an archive version of it up over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den podcast. So go and subscribe to that so you can watch this on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also on audio podcast on anchor.fm slash Wolf Den podcast and your preferred podcast service of choice no matter where you watch or listen to us though please be sure to subscribe rate and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms i got gold in the ninji by a long shot what's with that bronze look at how small the bronze <laughs> is uh damn well okay and there i am with my little gold stars yeah so that that shows up in the like when you're playing multiplayer Mm -hmm. uh anyway so turn on notifications here i will be streaming tomorrow hopefully warzone who knows what else uh i'll also be streaming on friday monster hunter rise with ian and aj uh as always thank you for being here make sure you drop a like on the on the podcast if you stayed for this long on the youtube video um and i'll see y'all later on twitch and follow will for you know, his thing. Yeah. Oh, wait, we got to raid somebody. All AJ. Right. Who's who's up? Everybody stay here for, for, for AJ. I forgot what he's playing. Uh, thank you for being here. Goodbye. Bye.